Without the proper planning, it's almost impossible to get a good indoor pet portrait. Too often their coat looks like they've been in the mud or their eyes look like reflectors. So how can you prevent your pet portrait from looking like it's rolling over and playing dead? Well, today we'll show you how to get everything set properly to make your pet beg to be in the picture. You'll even learn how to make them look like they were anywhere in the world. Make your pet portraits the best of show. Coming up next on The Whole Picture. Welcome to The Whole Picture. I'm Erin Manning. If you love your pet, you've probably tried to take a really great portrait of them because everyone wants a picture of their best friend to show to their other friends and family. But in most cases, that picture just doesn't do your pet justice. The first thing most people notice is that it's difficult to see the beauty and texture of their pet's coat. Even if you add an extra light to the scene, the picture can still turn out to be a little flat and boring. The other problem I noticed with a lot of homegrown pet portraits is that the pet could not look more disinterested or distracted. So to really capture your pet's personality, you want to make sure they're looking into or at least somewhere near the camera. Now, the reason for these problems is because most people don't take the time to properly set up the shot. You need to set up the lighting and the scene before you bring your pet into the picture because even the best trained pet is not gonna have the patience to sit there while you try to figure things out. Most people don't have the patience. Now the other thing you want to avoid is using the flash with your pet because when that flash goes off, it can startle them and you can also get that dreaded green eye, red eye effect, which is the problem my friend Rick has been having with his pictures. Yeah, Connor and Tucker. We have, <laughs> I'm a professional green eye, red eye photographer. That's okay. We'll make sure that those pictures don't put you out of business. Good, thank let's, you. Let's take a look at some of these. Yeah, here's a one of my f classic photograph of Tucker with uh, with green eye and uh, yeah. really well composed with a with a white laundry basket and sort of nasty <laughs> shoes in it. Slightly distracting. Yeah, yes. there's there's one of mine, and then here's a pretty much a standard of mine. It's a uh, two dogs uh, sort of out of focus, laying down. Yeah, they look a little disinterested, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, well, I like the symmetry though. Oh, good. Well, I'm improving. <laughs> Let me show you a picture I took of my pet. And wow. this is gonna illustrate some of the principles we'll go over today, some of the things that we'll learn in the lessons. You mean you're gonna teach me to take photographs like this with my camera? Yes, with your digital camera. Great. All the techniques you learn today are going to help set the foundation for you to take great pet portraits. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we'll do is set up your own little shooting area and I'm gonna show you how to use professional three-point lighting. Next, I'll show you how to adjust your ISO on your camera. And that's what film cameras refer to as ASA or film speed. Okay. Then I'm going to help you set up a professional looking background. And finally, we'll work on the computer and we'll change the background in your picture to make your dog look like he's completely somewhere else. Oh, cool. So if you're ready, yep. grab your camera. Okay. Let's head over to the photography studio. Great. Now the key to setting up a great pet portrait is setting up the light. Okay. So I have my professional lights back here, but I thought since you're just getting started, we'd use these clip-on lights so I picked up at the hardware store. Okay, yeah, I've seen these. Yeah, inside are daylight bulbs, and these bulbs come in all different wattages and sizes, so you can really play around with the direction and the quality of the light. Just make sure you point it somewhere near your subject. Okay. And the next special thing we're going to use are backdrops, and this is just fabric different designs for the background, or you could use a quilt, or hanging back here is just a roll of backdrop paper. Okay, cool. Now, one more thing. When taking pet portraits, doggy treats always help. Yeah, that works, <laughs> that'll work. So you ready to get started? Yeah, let me get the dogs for a walk first, okay. and then we'll be ready. Good idea. While you're doing that, I'll get things set up, and you know what, when you bring them back, go ahead and just keep them in the back room until they're ready for their close-up. Okay, we will do. Okay. For the perfect pet portrait, how do you figure out which light is key? Coming up, I'll show you how to set your lighting so that your portrait is a real treat. And we'll do a little sensitivity training. Welcome back to the whole picture. Rick Coley wants to take good pet portraits of his dogs. Everything he's taken so far is, well, not even good enough to be in the doghouse. So today, Rick will learn how to get his pet portraits to obey his every command. Hey, 
Do you have any trouble getting the dogs to settle down? No, they're actually being great today. That's great. Mm -hmm. You know, let's talk about your pictures we looked at before. I noticed in a couple of them, the lighting was not that great. Yeah, I, I just turned the lights on in the room and used the flash of the camera. Well, that's a lot of people do that, but that's why we're going to learn new lighting today. Okay. And one of the reasons I had you put the dogs in the back room is because we need to take the time to set up the lighting and the scene before we bring the dogs in. Okay. Because even the most well-behaved dogs like yours might not be patient enough to kind of sit around while we fiddle around with everything. Sure. And you don't want them to just run off the set, right? Mm -hmm. So let's get started and pick a backdrop. We've got fabric over here, mm -hmm. all different colors. And this quilt is great. We could just um, clip this up between a couple chairs and that sure. would be a great yeah. backdrop. But since we're in my studio, let's use what the professionals use and that's called a seamless backdrop hanging right back here. Okay. And these come in all different colors. This is black, we've got green, blue, red, all the different colors to use. This provides that nice continuous tone in the background. It also provides more even lighting. And you just wanna make sure whatever backdrop you pick that it complements your pet's coat color. Okay. And since we have two pets, one's dark, one's light, right. presents a little bit of a challenge. And that's where the lighting comes in. The basic lighting most professionals use is called three-point lighting okay. in photography, film, and TV. And here's what it is. Three lights, you've got what's called a key light, and that's your strongest light. It's out about here, kind of off to the side, but in front. Okay. Then you have a fill light, not quite as strong, coming in from the other side okay. that will fill in the shadows. And then some people call this the hair light. It's up about here. And what it does is it separates the object subject from the background. Oh, okay. Pretty easy, huh? Well, sounds that way. Okay. We have one more thing to do before we get started. We get the dogs. Well, kind of. This. It's so much easier to set up and light with a stuffed animal than a real one because they don't need to be walked. Start by selecting a background that will complement the color of your pet's coat. Avoid any color that matches the collar or is in anything else they might be wearing. One of the easiest backgrounds to light is seamless paper or fabric that's long enough to continue behind and under your subject. By creating a gentle curve where the background meets the floor, you'll minimize the possibility of harsh shadows from your lights. Secure the background, then put your test subject in place and begin your lighting. Three-point lighting is the basis for all portrait lighting, for people as well as pets. From above, a basic three-point setup should look something like this. You'll set a key light, then the fill light, and finally your backlight. When setting the lights for pet portraits, be careful not to let the light overpower your pet. Remember, many animals have a shiny coat, and too much light will make them look waxy. Start by setting the main or key light. This is your strongest, most direct light source and will influence the scene the most. Place it slightly to the side of your subject so that side is well lit. Again, keep the light just slightly above your subject to prevent shadows under the chin and body. Next, add the secondary light, known as the fill light. This light is placed on the opposite side and will help fill in the shadows caused by the key light. Make sure that this light is less bright than the key and that it has a wider beam. You may also want to set this light further back than the key light. Finally, set the backlight. This light goes behind your subject to help separate them from the background. It will provide the definition that will help make your pet stand out and give the photo dimension. Turn on the lights and then adjust them so that the shadows are minimized and it looks good to you. You may need to change out bulbs or add dimmers to reduce the intensity of one of the lights. Then put your camera into place and check the results on the LCD screen. You can adjust the lights if necessary. Okay, I can see in our LCD monitor here that our little doggy friend is looking a little blown out mm -hmm. and a little flat. Right. And that's because the auto exposure on most digital cameras has difficulty compensating for that indoor three-point lighting. Okay. So that's why we want to try playing with the ISO settings on your camera. What is this ISO? Good question. It's what we call ASA or film speed in traditional photography. And in Europe, they always refer to film speed as ISO. So it sort of became the worldwide standard. But regardless of what it's called, essentially you're just adjusting the sensitivity of your camera sensor. And the reason we want to do this is to avoid using the flash. Oh, because see. when you use the flash, the dogs get startled and they run off sure. and you don't sure. get as many good pictures as you probably could. Mm -hmm. That does come at a price, however. Remember with your film camera, if you needed less light, you'd use a higher ASA, but you'd get a lot of grain. Mm -hmm. 
Well, in digital, grain is called noise, but it's the same thing. You really don't want either one. So you want to play with the ISO settings before you take your actual portrait. Okay. To change the ISO or sensitivity of your camera, put your camera into menu mode and navigate through the menus until you find ISO. Press OK to select the menu option, then navigate to the middle ISO speed and press OK again. Now put the camera back into camera mode and take your first picture. Repeat the process selecting a lower and higher ISO and taking a picture at each speed. When you have three pictures, compare them to see which ones give you the best combination of image quality and detail. Then set your camera back to that ISO for your actual pictures. You may have to take more test photos to get the setting just right. Okay, release the hounds! When you're ready to shoot, remember, time is of the essence. Bring your pets in and get them settled down as soon as possible. Don't be afraid to use a treat or favorite toy as a bribe. And don't waste time trying to get them in the perfect position. Just concentrate on getting your pet to settle down. Once they're in place, start snapping right away. Remember, when taking pictures of pets, they're the ones who'll decide when they're done. For information on taking portraits or to see some more of the pictures we took today, log on to our website at DIYnetwork.com. No pets allowed? Not anymore. Coming up next, I'll show you how to manipulate the background so that you can make your pet portraits look like your pets are welcome everywhere. Welcome back to The Whole Picture. In order to get bold, beautiful pet portraits, you need to take the time to set everything in place before bringing in your subject. Choose a background and set your lights to optimize your ability to lower yourself to their level. Then set your camera to get the best balance between detail and image quality. Once the basics are in place, then the fun can really get started. I'm Erin Manning, and I'm helping Rick Coley take beautiful indoor pet portraits. Hey, Erin. Hey, Rick. How are your dogs doing? They're doing great, but like, uh, like movie stars, I think with all the cameras and lights, they're done for the day. Yeah, well, you know, I thought that might happen, so meet Coco Vaughn. Hey, Coco Vaughn. This is my neighbor's dog, and we'll be she's taking pictures of her today. Oh, she's a sweetie. Yeah. Now, how do you think your pictures turned out? I'm excited about it. I think they turned out great. Just for the first time ever, I got a couple of good photographs of them. I think they look good, too. Yeah. Nice color, nice lighting. Yeah. Well, now that you have the basics down, we can do some really cool things with your pictures. Great. In the computer, what we can do with the picture is actually remove this background here and replace it with any other background that you oh, want. Oh, great. Yeah, so all we need to do, first we'll place Coco Vaughn okay. right down here. This is what we're, where we'll take pictures mm -hmm. of her. Yeah. So the way that we'll do this is we need to create separation between Coco Vaughn and the background. Like physically pulling this thing forward? or um, No, you don't actually have to do that. We'll just create separation with light. Okay. Now there are a couple ways to do this. One is to get a brightly colored background like we have here, mm -hmm. and just make sure the same green color or whatever color you use is not somewhere on the dog's coat or the collar or whatever they're lying in right there okay. or the chair. Okay. And then secondly, you want to make sure that you have enough light added onto the subject to create that separation between Coco Vaughn and the background. Okay. Now this is the same effect that news stations use when they want to separate that news person or the weather person from the map. To help separate the background from your subjects, you need to increase the light on the background itself. It's key that you make sure that the color of the background is not anywhere in your subject's collar or in anything else in the scene. Once you're sure, brighten the background by adding additional light on it. It's crucial that the light be continuous with no shadows or other dark spots you may need to add multiple lights. The key here is creating an even color so that the computer can completely remove it. Take a couple of pictures increasing and decreasing the light on the background. This will ensure you get a shot that the computer can work with. Okay, I think we have enough here. I'll go ahead and take Coco Vaughn back if you want to shut everything down. Okay. And I'll meet you at the computer. Fantastic. Come on, Coco Vaughn. Who says you have to be a magician to make things disappear? When we come back, I'll break out my magic wand and teach you how to remove and improve the background in your portraits. Once you know how to set up everything you'll need to take a great portrait, then you can start manipulating your pictures and take advantage of the digital and digital photography. Digital photography gives you the reward of being able to improve on what you've got. 
Okay, I already went ahead and plugged in your camera and downloaded okay. all the photos that you took. So go ahead and scroll through and find one that you like. Well, there's some great ones. Yeah. Connor, I'm talking about Coco Vaughn. Coco Vaughn might yeah. be good because of the continuous tone background. You know, we relit okay. that. All right, so just go ahead and double click. That's a good one. That's good. Now, in addition to loading in your photos, I also loaded in some great background photos. Okay. And this is where the fun starts. We're going to start taking out the background and putting in another background. It'll look like Coco Vaughn was completely somewhere else. Okay. So what we'll do is go up here to the menu bar and just do a file, save as, and call it something else to start. Okay. Because we want to archive our original photo in case anything happens. We'll just okay. be working on the copy. There you go. We'll just click save. Great. Perfect. Okay. All right. Now, let me explain a little bit about image editing programs. In most image editing programs, there are layers. And right. layers, the layer palette right here is what we're going to be working in. And what that does is it let us, lets us allow and control everything we do to the photograph in layers. So okay. you'll see in just a minute. Go ahead and click on that highlighted layer, and it's going to let us rename it. Okay. It was background. That'll be called layer. And it took off the lock, so now we can edit this okay. photograph. Now, the other thing I want to show you over here is the toolbar on the left. And one of the tools is called the Magic Wand. Okay. If you click on that, what the Magic Wand is is a color selection tool. So if we take your cursor and put it over the picture and okay. just click, you'll see that the Magic Wand icon shows up. And when you click on it, it selects all the different pixels in the green background. Okay. And because it's a continuous tone background, it's going to be pretty easy to take this background out. Okay. Now, you'll never guess how easy this is to get rid of the rest of the background. How's that? Click on the delete key. Oh, okay. And voila, oh, cool. the background is gone. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and go up here to the menu bar and click on select and deselect. And this is just going to get rid of all those little dancing ants around the picture, the okay. magic wand tool. Now we're going to have some fun and bring in the other background shot. So since Coco Vaughn is French, why not use the Eiffel Tower for the background? Okay. There you go. There's the Eiffel Tower. Just double click on that. Okay. So what we want to do is select everything in the Eiffel Tower and copy it. So go up here to select okay. all. Okay. Okay. Now we've selected the whole Eiffel Tower. If you just kind of click up here and move it down a little bit so we can see a little bit of Coco Vaughn at the top right. Okay. okay. Now over here in the toolbar, make sure you're clicked on the up the Move tool. There you are. Okay. Now click on the Eiffel Tower and just drag it over to Coco Vaughn. And drop it. And drop it. Now, it's placed right on top of Coco Vaughn, and it's a little too small. So okay. two things. First of all, we're going to make this a lot bigger. And you can do that by clicking in the little corner here with your cursor. I'm going to hold down the Shift key. And what this okay. does is it prevents the aspect ratio from going askew. It'll okay. stay the same ratio. Go ahead and just drag it all the way out make and make it big. it big to cover up Coco Vaughn. Okay. And you can move it over, too, because you're still on the Move tool. So just move that over. Great. All right. Now, look in your Layers palette. You see we have two layers now. One is the Eiffel Tower. The mm -hmm. other is Coco Vaughn. Okay. Now, there's a hierarchy to these layers. The Eiffel Tower now is on top of Coco Vaughn. We can't see her. So go ahead and just grab that layer and pull it down below the Coco Vaughn layer. There she is. And there we have Coco Vaughn in front of the Eiffel Tower. Very French, very French. Very. Just go ahead and do a file, save as, okay. and we'll print it out. If you'd like to know more about taking indoor pet portraits or any of the techniques you saw here today, or just want to know more about photography, just log on to our website at DIYNetwork.com. So are you excited? I am. I learned a ton today. It's great. I think you did too. You know, look at the photograph you brought in earlier today. Ugh, who took that thing? It's terrible. <laughs> you did. Now, look what happened after all the lessons you learned today. Now that's a picture. That is a picture. That's look great. how much better this is. Yeah. What do you like about it more? Well, the the colors a lot. The lighting's a lot better. She's in Paris. She's in Paris. She's yes. She's obviously Good very start. happy and attentive, uh -huh. not bored. And looking right in the camera, so right. it looks like it's lo she's looking right at you. Yeah. You know, with the, the comparison of these two photographs, I think you've shown market improvement today. Well, thank you. You're a great teacher. Well, thank you. Just keep up the good work. And I really enjoyed meeting you and Tucker and Connor. We had a lot of fun. Well, the boys had a great time. Good deal. Well, I hope you'll use what you learned today and take your own great pet portraits. And remember, always bring your camera with you because the more pictures you take, the better you get. Join me next time on The Whole Picture. I think this one's a good too.